We begin on a somber note. 17 year old Rashida thought migrating from Sabilugu to Accra would end her poverty, but little did she know about the harsh life in the slum of Sodom and Gomorrah. Rashida recounts tales of hardship, verbal and physical abuse, and is now tired of living in Accra. She told Jojo Kobna that she has decided to return home, but only after purchasing a sewing machine. This is old Fadama, now popularly called Sodom and Gomorrah. It is arguably Ghana's biggest slum. Squeezed at the edge of the Kole Lagoon, it is now on the verge of explosion. The 80,000 population is gradually threatening the existence of the Kole Lagoon. Old Fadama presents you with snapshots of portraits of urban poverty in Accra. In here are many people who have abandoned their villages and towns with dreams of making it big in life. Unfortunately, many only succeed in merely eking out a living. In the heart of the community is Rashida, a headporter from Savlugu in the northern region of Ghana. Unlike many other headporters, she successfully graduated from high school. She nurtured false dreams that the only way she can make it is in Accra. She then arrived in Accra in December 2017, but now regrets her decision. Some people came here, came back to Savannah to say that if you come to Accra, a lot of things happen. You will receive, you will get money. I enjoy their life too. Unless you go and see how life is sitting in Accra. So, and I say, oh, I'll also come and see how life is. So, as far as I'm here, the life is not easy for me. Paying for accommodation, paying to use bathrooms and toilets is rather strange to her. We don't have windows. That's the, the reason why we are not feeling happy to sleep. When you are to bath, you pay. How much? 50 pesos a bucket. But the hot water is 70 pesos. The cool one is 50 pesos. And then the one city, they will give you toilet food. 80 pesos toilet food, but the 70 and 50 paper. So which one do you buy? I don't have money, I use paper. She tells me that about 20 of them sleep in a small room without a window. The way we are sleeping in the north, we don't do that. How, how do you sleep? Can't you see this small room? We were more than 20. If you are going to sleep, the space will not be enough for you to lie down very well, to stretch yourself, to do everything. You can't do that. So when I came here, oh, I say, if I get money, I'll go back to North Carolina. I'll no more stay here and I'll no more come to Accra again. Rashida says many people have misconceptions that Kaye are not educated. So they are always verbally abused and sometimes physically abused. The person will just insult you as if you don't have father or mother for coming here. I was to cross the road and I didn't see her, I pushed her. So the water fell down as well. She said I should pay for the water and I said I don't have money. And then she said, then if you don't have money, I'll slap you before you go and I'll pay my water. And what happened? So she slapped me. She slapped me. I said I should go. So what did you do? I was crying and I said, if I come back, I'll call my mom to tell her that she should give me money and I'll come back. So the day that the woman slapped me. That was the day that I'm robber came and take all our phones in this hour. Rashida takes me round and shows me other girls in her community who have abandoned basic education with dreams of making it big in Accra. The girls tell us where they come from. 
Michelle. 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 Rashida has had enough of the rough life in Accra and this time wants to leave Accra permanently. Mm, the money that I'm waiting for, if I get, I've already have 100 cities. If I get three or four and I'll add it and I'll go so that it will make 500. I want to use the money and buy tailor so that I'll lend the tailor to and add it to the school. We visit where she usually hangs around to carry goods for some few coins. The camera seems to deter her clients from engaging her services. So we leave her alone to continue her job. The bus from the north just arrived with young girls who have also abandoned school and have come to earn a living. Many more arrive at night, brimming with hope, but leave Accra disappointed, wishing they had never made the journey. Various governments have promised to stem the tide of rural urban migration, but have failed. Rashida is poised to make a change in her life. All she needs is a sewing machine. Jojo Kobna. Join News. And moving on, government has been touting its success in the agri sector for recording bumper harvest of maize and other grains and vegetables as the farm gates in parts of the country. Agri Minister Dr. Osei Friakoto last month claimed the Planting for Food and Jobs program has created 745,000 jobs, but it turns out uh, some traders in Accra have to travel to neighboring Togo, uh, Burkina Faso and Benin to purchase a bag load of maize amidst a bumper harvest claims. John News' Komla Adam, who visited the Madina market here in Accra, reports beyond the challenges with maize and other grains, the prices of vegetables appear to have reduced significantly. It's 5 a.m. and the sun is yet to come up. In the center of the market is a foodstuff hub. A few meters away from where I stand, a blue Kia truck is offloading plantain and the market women scramble for the biggest and heaviest bunches from the stock. 52-year-old Mary Dako is one of the plantain traders here. She's been doing this business for nearly 20 years, long enough to know that price of this popular food item this time is slightly better than it was same time and season last year. How much am I a beer? 10, and I say 15, 1 million. It's a young year, a beer at 10 or 4. Five, two CDs. We used to get 10 or 15 bunches for 100 CDs. We subsequently sold them four fingers for two CDs. Oh, say you're turning time of the year. You'd be a five hundred, and I said four hundred. Uh huh. That's profits. Aye. Now, this year, now, say, say, I'm going to say, I'm going to offload it. No, say, now, I'm going to say, 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 now it's significantly better. We can get 20 bunches for 100 CDs and we resell four or five fingers for two CDs. Be a one million. But Tony, yeah, I'm trying to tell the best thing. The mother of four tells me the only challenge is getting market for the produce. I need to know that I need to buy home pay. I say, I'm going to buy a car. 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 I'm going to buy a one of the main crops under government's planting for food and jobs program is maize. And here in the southeastern part of the Medina market is a maize hub. 48-year-old Mary Lakai learns the trade from her mother and knows more than any other the market dynamics. Right here in the maize barn are maize bags packed on top of one another in carefully thought out columns and rows. Each of these bags belonging to Mary Lakai who brought them from Togo last December. 
Yeah, yeah, to me for Bikura fi Bokina wo. Yeah, to me for Bifi Togo. Ah, ni di eh, what is the eye anu kure pa? Ni ame mi ton se se kura me di Fi Togo. Me fa ni last month. We sometimes go to Burkina Faso. These ones I have here are from Togo. Some of the maize here in Ghana are not properly bagged. Ghana farmers no omo omo yields no em by anans. They ain't na other maize from other parts of the world never. Me 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 die die. As I said, me ko fa bin si wo hunti no. Me ko ame fa ni nyina preko. Ena at times in so no aha eh Bruno omo nye ni ye omo die fi ni ni omo ni nyina gum. Into ba u brebe bre e honso no o mu ye ni ye fan yan san na wakoto to go ho no uh huh eli a me ni ma me bi bon ko ma o ka che me se em em wa na e invade some of the farms last year no worms no e no so ka hunti na maize no em ba this year ah e no so ka hun be bre the problem also can be blamed on last year's worm infestation if we hadn't gone to get some from togo prices of maize would have hit the roofs by now because Interesting, say to me, go to go to me, go booking and into. I'm a way in tension up a form. Kakra, yes, I'm going by now. Never cost six and I seven. If you say I feed the and yeah, yeah, be brave. The price of plantain may be stable, but the situation is not the same for maize and other grains, as Madame Lakai tells me. Miller Tenin, so a non podi a full run by a cry and yeah, who's a full rubber last year by this time, yes, shen six cities, but a near eight cities. Non mi le tolo nka ni bo di nsin e bro before no no na ya di ya ni bo nye di nkura Melat used to be cheaper than maize it's out of season now so it goes for 80 days She tells me she buys her food items mainly from farmers in the northern eastern and bonohafu regions who have complained about worsening farming conditions due to government's failure to provide them with fertilizers The fertilizer ni podi omo se omo to Farmers do not have fertilizers. They actually buy them. November, me ko boki na no. Me huse ya pa ki waka matukulete sebe ya miensa ya di ko boki na. On my last trip to Burkina Faso, I saw truck loads of fertilizers heading out of Ghana. Wah, ane ninti ne yako hano. Ya bi biya so ya ya ko be biya. I have now moved to the main vegetable landing point in the market where tons of cabbages, carrots, cucumber, among others, are being sorted by traders who plan to sell it at other markets. <laughs> Last year, a bag of vegetables went for 400 seeds. This time, we get it for 200 or 250. 10 cents, you say, 4 million. So much is so. They say they are 3, and it's 2, 5. It's a whole thing that's been done. It's a whole thing that's been done. It's a whole thing that's been done. Last year, it's a whole thing that's been done. And this year, it's a whole thing that's been done. Last year, it's a whole thing that's been done. This year, it's a whole thing that's been done. And to do far now, we use answer when you abuse when you are cracking. Say, I hear, sir. Oh, say, I'm a fan in time, time, dear. But to be able to me and you be able to say one, one million. We can make profits of about 100 or 50 cities. Mami Abna is a regular customer here at the Medina market. She tells me vegetable prices are slightly better this time than they were same time last year when they were in season. I talk a lot to ten CD, cabbage ten CD, green pepper ten CD. I buy ten CDs worth of vegetables. Last year, over two ten CD, carrot ten CD, cabbage ten CD. Quantity now the amount, the other amount is here. No difference is between man. This year, the year you cut ten last year. This year, the normal for pa or pepper so cabbage now for. They are cheaper this year, even though they are not in season. May try and share ten CD now. Obey your man, no, not my share. Uh, okay. In spite of a few challenges they are confronted with, the market women are optimistic of what the future holds. Their only prayer is for a good market and decent profit margins to sustain their businesses. Komla Adum, Joy News, Medina Market.
Now, the Ghana Police Service, though mandated with task of uh, maintaining law and order, is one of the most deprived public institutions in the country. It is faced with a lack of logistics, accommodation, and officers working in unfavorable conditions. This has impeded effective policing in the country. Volta Regional Correspondent Fred Kwame Asari tells the story of the Hohoi District Police Command, which has embarked on a fundraising campaign to undertake projects to warrant efficient policing in the area. The Hohoi District Command is housed in a rented structure, which apparently is over 50 years old. It accommodates about five administrative offices, including their commanders and staff offices. The Ahwe District Police Commander, Superintendent Stephen Buedu, laments the state of the office structure. Where we are currently are is a, a rental quarters. This very place of rental quarters. And I think Ahwe has been in the system for long. It doesn't speak well that the police uh, headquarters structure is a chamber or rental quarters. It doesn't fit the status of Ahwe. The command is also understaffed and lacks the requisite logistics for effective policing. Superintendent Buedu is optimistic crime rates in the district would drastically reduce if the district is finished with enough logistics and human resources. Yes, we can do more. We can do better than we are doing. And I think the, the recent uh, regional idea of transformation is helping a lot. We are sacking the men to do or give up their best. The men have been our own main problem. And I believe with the lack of men has necessitated we looking up to the entire community. And they have now become the ears, the nose, and then the eye of the police in their various community. Police officers at the barracks are compelled to share a small apartment with their families due to inadequate space. They therefore position their refrigerators on corridors outside while others convert their corridors into rooms using plywood. A small split cell which has three chambers contains as many as 40 suspected criminals. This, coupled with an, an appalling sanitary condition, poses serious health threat to these suspected criminals. However, through the benevolence of a development chief in the Gbi traditional area, King Bansa and his wife, a holding centre has been constructed to accommodate juvenile and female suspected culprits. The centre has three cells furnished with two beds each and sanitary facilities. King and Queen Bansa explain they were touched by the plight of females when they visited the cells, hence they are resolved to finance the construction of the holding centre. Because I saw how, um, how small the cell is and how many people were inside, men and female, and I I don't want to think about what happened to the female inside this prison. So the, the policemen can't uh, uh, help them. So we decided and followed the advice of the chief uh, commander in chief to build their own holding cell. The command aims to continue soliciting for funds to construct a new structure to accommodate the administrative unit of the Hohoe District Police Command. Fred Kwame Asari, Joy News, Hohoe. Still watching Joy News today, my name is Daniel Daze. After these important messages, we'll be telling you more about the NPP's plans concerning the constituency elections that are about to take place. I'm Daniel Dazi. Stay with us. Let's do some politics now. The governing New Patriotic Party has opened nominations for members who are aspiring to hold various positions at the constituency level of the party across the country. Acting General Secretary John Buedu announced some guidelines for the process of nomination at a press conference a while ago. Hendrik Ghana says, only prospective aspirants are entitled to purchase application forms 
for the from the constituency elections committee. All that we are saying is that we don't want a situation where one person will come and buy all the funds and decide to be the one distributing to uh, prospective applicants. If you want to contest election, you yourself go to the constituency election committee and purchase one form. And your name will be indicated uh, against your name and the position you want to contest for. Anybody, we are not preventing anybody from wanting to donate or support our, 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 our party members on the ground. But if you want to do so, you just look for those who want to support, give the resources to them, for them to go and buy the forms in order to prevent this noise sometimes that occurs where people will be complaining they can't see forms, they can't get forms because one person had purchased all the forms. And we are insisting that one form, one applicant. That's exactly what the rule is. If for any reason an applicant is unable to procure an application form from the constituency election committee, you or she may petition the general secretary for an endorsed application form at the, at the national secretariat respectively. If for any reason, go to constituency election committee and you are not able to get, you need to petition. It is not by just uh, whims of your own decision to decide to come and buy forms here. We are restricting as much as possible. So all forms will be sold by the constituency election committee, unless in an extreme, extreme case where one is unable to get the forms. And even that should come with a reason. We are not going to sit here and be selling forms to applicants. All forms must be done because politics is local, and we expect that uh, our members will be local in that direction. Vetting results shall be released not later than three days to the election date. Uh, so the constituency election committee must quickly put together their vetting uh, 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 process and be able to really release the results as early as three days before the main election so that. If Now, a public hearing is underway in the Bono Hafu region on the creation of the new Bono East region. The Bono East region is among the proposed six new regions to be created under the current administration. John News' Anna Sabit is at the public hearing taking place in Techiman and joins us on phone with more. Anna, what are some of the issues coming out of the public hearing? Um, good afternoon. As we speak, uh, the committee has started this hearing about uh, uh, four prominent persons that spoken. The Bruno Alpha Regional Minister, uh, Lawyer Asuma Cheme, has uh, welcomed the commission to the uh, and we have called on the people to uh, collaborate with the commission and then make sure uh, they cope uh, with them uh, in ensuring that uh, this part of the region also gets uh, a new region as the case. Uh, also, we have the Omanhene of the Tsukiman traditional uh, area and now of the idea of the the first also speaking, uh, urging or uh, telling the commission how my system and, and the eastern part of the uh, brown and half region has been neglected in terms of developmental uh, projects over the last uh, uh, decade. So he is calling on the commission to, as a matter of urgency, uh, approve this particular uh, proposal of uh, getting a new region. Besides that, the chairman of the uh, commission has also spoken. Uh, I'm talking of chairman uh, Jeff, uh, Jeffrey uh, Stephen Alan Jobe. He has also urged the people to uh, be cooperative and called on them to be specific on why uh, they think this part of the region needs a new region or right. why they don't think so. So he has also ended his uh, uh, comments, and uh, uh, Professor Kunsiamia also uh, mounted a podium, and he also uh, paid the people to the property. In fact, almost all those who are speaking for now are all emphasizing the fact that this part of the region needs uh, this particular region because uh, they've been neglected in terms of uh, right. uh, developmental projects. Yeah. What has the response been like from the people? So the people are, you know, uh, all excited about this particular uh, uh, initiative or proposal. They are here in their numbers, uh, market women, uh, traders, uh, people from the uh, uh, um, uh, uh, mechanic shops. In fact, the entire community uh, here at the Kuman Community Centre, and they are all willing or praying for the approval uh, of this particular proposal. Have any submissions been made? 
Um, the uh, on, uh, as I stated, the big men have started speaking. The chairman, the, uh, the Omani, the regional minister, they are through with their uh, submission. Now it's about time for the public to also make their input. Thank you, Anasta. This will come back to you for updates on this story. You're watching Joy News today. My name is Daniel Dazan. The Volunteers Against Environmental Degradation has arrested three Chinese nationals for defying government's ban to engage in illegal mining activities in the Diaso Forest in the central region. Some dodgy miners have, over the nine-month period of the ban, been operating at the blind side of the Operation Vanguard team and other task forces to dig for gold. Let's go live to the central region and speak with Ricardo who is with Volunteers Against Environmental Degradation, the team that has made the arrest. Thanks for joining us, Ricardo. Tell us, where are these three Chinese miners now? These three Chinese miners, as I speak to you, are now at Diaso Police. They are, the Diaso, they are with the Diaso Police. Yes, and uh, they are being processed for court either today or tomorrow. How often do you come across defiant miners like these Chinese? Um, as we speak, you see, we didn't deploy, or the government did not deploy um, the military men or the prison vanguard to the central region. Mm. And because of that, most of these illegal miners have run to hide in the central region where they are doing their illegal mining. Yes, so they are... We have a lot of uh, illegal Chinese miners in the central region, as I talked to you. But how many, apart from these three, have you yourselves come across? We can count more than 100 in the, in the forest area of Diaso and Ayim, yes. Why did you have to arrest these guys yourselves? Did you not inform the police? Uh, well, uh, we are, you know, we are the monitoring team put together by the Minister of Lands and Natural Resources, working directly under the minister. So we are monitoring the activities of Operation Vanguard and I report to the ministry monthly. So we have the mandate to, to arrest every illegal miner we come across as we are doing our monitoring. So we are moving to all the regions where mining or illegal mining activities are going on and then report to the minister. So, so you are working separately from Operation Vanguard? Come again, please. You are working separately from Operation Vanguard. We are working closely with Operation Vanguard. Sometimes we give them the tip off, they will go there and then get them arrested. But like Sometimes, you said, Operation Vanguard is not in the central region. Sorry to step in there. So how yes, come you yes. were there? They are not there. They, are, they, 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 they don't have a station there because what they are saying is that they don't have logistics. Their vehicles are not enough to have a station at the central region. So they have stationed as Eastern, Ashanti, and then the Western. But for Central, where illegal mining is at its peak, they don't have uh, a station over there. So whatever we, what we do is that when we go there and we see that some people are mining in some areas, you know, they do the mining at dawn now. They don't do it during the day. Mm. They do it during the night. Yes, so these people were arrested during the night at the dawn. Yes, that, that's when we got them arrested. So right. we give them a tip off, and then they'll go there and then arrest them. Thank yeah. you, Ricardo, for joining us. He's a member of Volunteers Against Environmental Degradation, VEAD. You're still watching Joy News today with me, Daniel Dazi. Up next is business.